Good morning, friends. It gives me immense pleasure to be here again for my course, Flight Mechanics. This course belongs to the fourth semester, Aeronautical in students of Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad, India. I am Dr. Vaidhi Duvedi, professor from Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. Today's my topic overviews are like this, performance characteristics, mission parameters, flight with different powers, average value endurance equations, average value range equation. So in my last class, I have discussed about range for jet powered airplane. And we have seen that there is a difference between the range of the propeller aircraft and the range of the jet powered aircraft. Types of ranges, we have seen three types of uh, ranges we have discussed already in my last class. Different velocities for this uh, minimum drag velocity, maximum velocity, minimum power velocity, minimum thrust velocity and star velocity. These all things we have already done in our previous classes. Then we have already covered the constant altitude range equation. In that we have seen that as and when our density is remain constant and we have derived the equation for the range and that we have already completed. Cruise climb or the constant velocity cruise, it is also completed. Range for the propeller aircraft, we have already derived the equation for that. Now we will discuss today performance characteristics. So, if we take the aircraft and if, first we will see the motorbike or the motor car. If you want to buy the car or the bike, what parameters we are going to see? In this, we will see the speed of the bike or the speed of the car. Then we will see the fuel consumption, how much mileage the bike is giving per liter, how much it is consuming the fuel. Then maneuver, how much it is maneuvering capability of the bike. Then acceleration means if we are giving the acceleration from 0 to 100 kilometers, how much seconds it is taking. That is called the acceleration. Pick up, how much power it is delivering and the maintenance cost of the motorbike. These are the parameters for the any ground vehicle which I have mentioned here. If you see about if it is a aircraft, sorry. If aircraft here also we have the speed, here we have the different speeds, maximum range speed, maximum endurance speed, then minimum drag speed, stall speed and so on. Fuel consumption also, it is very specific fuel consumption, SFC and TSFC. We have discussed this both in my previous classes. Maneuvering the aircraft, how much it can bank, roll, yaw and also combination of each motions like a spiral, fugoid and so on. Acceleration also it is very important and it is depend upon the load factor n is equal to L by W that we will be discussing. Pick up also it is there and maintenance also it is there. Now it is mission parameters which we are going to discuss now. Mission, you know the mission, we have the mission profile like this. This is the takeoff. Then it is a climb. This is the climb. This is the cruise. This is the descent. This is the loiter. 
and this is the landing. These are the basic mission profile of any aircraft. So how we can do the mission parameterization that we are going to see in this diagram. Here we can see that data driven mission parameterization. If you see here again, here is the takeoff, then here we have the climb, then here we have the cruise here, again climb, again cruise, here we have the descent flight and here we have the landing. So here mission parameter distribution, here flight features, here sector, origin, destination, aircraft type, here for the each point, altitude, speed, ground speed, we have to see all these parameters to find out. So it is a data driven mission parameterization. Next is the flight information. We should also have the information about the flight. First information we need the time, then distance and weather and the weight. Here we have PFIS, it is a data available. And then here flight time, distance, it is a ground distance and average in route wind. For the weight, we should f uh, see the landing weight and the trip weight. Further, if we go further for this, here is a takeoff, then here we have the climb, then here again cruise, again climb. It is cruise, descent and the landing. For each one, if you see here, this is the aircraft performance. We have the, we, we should know the aerodynamic coefficient. Engine performance, we should know the thrust and thrust specific fuel consumption. Atmosphere, we should know the density, pressure and this temperature or the lapse rate. These are things we should know. Now, if you see here in this point, output for each point, lift, drag, throttle and the thrust, flight path angle here, angle of attack here, time elapsed, distance flown, weight. Here we have the output for the whole mission, that is how much fuel is consumed, flight time and the range. Then we should validate from here to here. These two things we have to very much clearly understand. Now we will discuss about long range jetliner. So what is the features for this long range jet? So this is the reference I am putting here one. So here we have some characteristics for the two types of aircraft very reputed and very big aircraft nowadays, Boeing 747-400 and Airbus 380 Dreamliner. Here we should see the passenger capacity 416 by 400 and 524. Here we have maximum 525. Maximum we can carry 800. Maximum fuel is 21. 216 800 pounds here are liters here 3 lakh 10,000 liters here 2 lakh 16,800 liters maximum range for the Boeing is 13,450 kilometer for Airbus we have 15,000 200 km cruise speed at FL35. It is FL35 means at 35,000 feet. It is 910 km per hour. This goes to 900 km per hour. Service ceiling is 41,000 feet and this is 42,980 feet. So this service ceiling of Airbus is high. Speed range is also high. Velocity is little small. So there are different, uh, these are the two major big airliners, jetliners, and we have seen some specific 
uh, things about these two uh, airliners. Now I will discuss about flight with different power. So here we can see the a plot of power versus velocity, air speed. In this x axis, it is the air speed, and in y axis, we have the power. Uh, as mentioned here, and here we can see different points are there. Just I will write here point one, point two, point three. Point four. So if we level flight is not possible at this very low speed. So if your aircraft is from here, this is the velocity. If this is in this direction, aircraft cannot sustain. So always your aircraft should fly more than this, and this is called V stall. This is called the V stall, the st stall velocity aircraft cannot fly below this. Now if you see this 2, it is a minimum power speed. In this minimum power speed also, slow flight, minimum power speed. If you are flying in this speed, your power consumption will be minimum. This is the medium power or the normal speed. In this normally we fly but here speed is less and this is the maximum speed or state and the level flight. This is the V max for the aircraft. So if you see here, if it is less than this your angle of attack is very high and aircraft is not able to sustain. Here the aircraft will go with a very slow cruise. As you reach here, it is a normal cruise. In this zone, it is a normal cruise, normal flight range, and here it is a fast cruise. So as you are approaching here, your aircraft will be a fast cruise. So power required to overcome the drag, and here we have one power available. So this is the point where power available and the power required, this is the PR, is same. If you are flying in this speed, there you will get the maximum speed for the aircraft. So this flight with different powers, with different velocity is depicted in this and we can see that aircraft cannot go less than this velocity. And if you are from here to here, the speed will be very less, angle of attack is a little higher. As you go high speed, high speed, your angle of attack is going to down, down and down. So, this is the flight with different powers. Now, power versus speed plot and its discussion. We are going to discuss about power versus speed. So, here we can see that in the y axis we have the fuel flow power re required in horsepower. In this x axis we have the speed here. So, we can see that this is the power required at altitude. And if you see here, you, if you want to fly the maximum range, then you have to draw a tangent from origin in this line and where it is intersecting, this is the intersection point, this one, this is the maximum range at L by D maximum. So if you want to take maximum range, any aircraft need to fly with velocity where L by D is maximum. So if you are flying in this point, just I will write here A, B and this is the point C. Point C is the point where the, your L by D is a maximum and your range will be maximum. Maximum endurance. If you want to fly for a maximum endurance where the power required is minimum, this is V for maximum endurance. So, maximum range, V for maximum range is higher than V for maximum endurance. 
that we have to keep in mind that weight, altitude and all the other configuration are constant. So here we have and this is the stall. Your aircraft should not go beyond this. So that we have to take care of and if you see the fuel consumption, fuel consumption is also for maximum endurance fuel consumption is the least for maximum range it is slightly more than the fuel consumption of the endurance. Average value endurance equation. So here average value endurance equation recall that a specific endurance applies to a moment in flight for an aircraft knowing the available fuel and aircraft endurance can be estimated by the following equation that is average endurance is equal to SE into W0 minus W1 for SE we can write 1 by thrust specific fuel consumption into thrust required W0 minus W1. This is called the average value endurance equation. W0 is the aircraft initial weight and W1 is the final weight. The difference is the amount of fuel available for the endurance mission. The equation says that endurance is improved by maximizing available fuel and minimizing both thrust specific fuel consumption and thrust required or drag. This makes sense. Sometimes the equation is written in the following form, particularly if thrust curve are available. So we can write average endurance is equal to 1 by T S S F C into drag average W0 minus W1 or delta W F is equal to divided by thrust specific fuel consumption into drag. So here this TR is equal to drag. So if drag is given, uh, that is also TR. So in this we can calculate. So here delta WF is the available fuel and D average is the drag or thrust required at the average weight of the aircraft during the endurance mission. The following example shows that shows how to use these equations to estimate endurance because thrust specific fuel consumption is typically presented in units of per hour. Endurance has the units of hour. So delta WF and D average are in the units of pound. So average value of range equation. So we have seen how the uh, endurance is depend on same way the range equation will also will be depend and this is given here that average value of range equation like we did in our discussion of endurance we can develop an average value equation to estimate an aircraft range. Range is simply aircraft velocity times endurance. So we can write r is equal to this is the time and this is the velocity e into v, no, v infinity. So it is a time into velocity. Note that endurance is typically presented in hours. So be careful with the units of free steam velocity v infinity. Substituting in our expression for average endurance, the following is the is obtained. Recall that d average is the drag or thrust required at the average weight of the aircraft during the mission. So range average is equal to endurance average into v infinity and we know that endurance is equal to delta wf is equal divided by t sfc drag into v infinity. So delta wf thrust specific fuel consumption drag average divided by weight drag average divided by velocity. So this is the equation for range, average range equation. So now we can see here that a plot of TR versus the velocity and this we can see here that this is the drag minimum. This is the drag minimum where TR is minimum and this is the 
minimum drag velocity. This is the minimum drag velocity. And this is the minimum range velocity. So here point 1 and point 2. So this is the point 1 and this is the point 2 and this uh, slope of this curve is d by v infinity. d by v infinity and this is the minimum. This d by v infinity should be minimum. So thrust required versus velocity graph for aircraft average weight. Now we will see here that like endurance, maximizing available fuel and minimizing TSFC will increase the range. However, now the ratio of d average by v infinity, not simply d average, should be minimized to maximize range. On a thrust curve, the air speed to fly at d average by v infinity can be determined as given in the figure. Recall that flying at minimum drag or minimum L by D will maximize endurance and the air speed to achieve maximum range is higher than that of the so the air speed to achieve maximum range is higher than the maximum endurance. So this we have to take care of. So, V maximum range is higher than V maximum endurance. That we can see in this diagram also. Here, this is the point 1 is a minimum drag velocity for maximum endurance. And this is the velocity for maximum range. So, this two velocity we have to take care of and it is very important to understand. So, I hope these uh, topics are very much clear for you all. And uh, if you see here, range, we, you know that uh, velocity is equal to ds by dt, where this is the distance and this is the time. So distance is equal to velocity into time. So here E is a, this is the E and this is the V infinity. So here R is equal to E into V infinity. So this is the range. And we have already find out E is equal to delta Wf divided by thrust specific fuel consumption into drag into V. Now if we make this V here, V infinity, so delta Wf by TSFC drag average by V infinity. So here we can see if you want more range, delta Wf should be high. Or TSFC should be low, fuel consumption should be low or D average by V infinity should be low and this low will happen not here, not here but here. Here you will see D by V infinity is the minimum. Okay, at this velocity. So, this we have to take care of and accordingly we have to do the things. So, in, in next class I am going to take the following topic, minimum drag speed, reasons for minimum drag speed, formulation for minimum drag speed, speed stability, numericals, this we are going to take in my next class. These are the references which I have taken from Anderson JD, Aircraft Performance and Design.
इंटरनेशनल एडिशन मैग्रा हिल्स फर्स्ट एडिशन 1999 इसल बाय एमी एयरक्राफ्ट परफॉर्मेंस थ्योरी एंड प्रैक्टिस एआईए एजुकेशन सीरीज एआईए टू any questions you are welcome to ask to my email yd dwedi dwivedi at the rate gmail.com so or you can also give the comments on the comment box please do like and subscribe thank you very much very soon i will take my another lecture till then goodbye see you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates